Hey, what's going on guys? Edward here back with another video. Thank you so much for being here. Before we actually continue with the video, we start with the video, uh, I just wanted to give you a, a quick uh, review right here about the um, sellout that I'm, uh, the sell that I'm doing actually for the month of December. As you may already know, uh, on my website, on you can go on di directly on teamprofitsfx.com. You can find the information and how to get the actual course plus mentorship plus the VIP signals for life um, only for $80. Okay, this offer is opened only until December the 15th. So don't miss out, guys. Alrighty. So, okay, I just wanted to give you a um, an update and um, an analysis for next week. What to expect on markets um, for next week. Uh, so basically, guys, we go right here. I wanted to show you a few things right now. Uh, looking at the formation, nice, nice formation right now, a nice setup. Look at what the market was doing. It was pretty much consolidating in this big, big range right here and melting down due to you know a few things with this uh, fear of the omicron virus we had that that drop so all right i'm just using right here i'm going on a four hour time frame i'm using my indicators for the swing strategy and uh, rem remember i'm i'm constantly using this uh once i see the market dropping okay so i can catch a nice buy for swing trading all righty uh, you might wonder what are these green lines right here? What is this green line? Uh, this is basically the entries that I had. Like this was the first swing entry I had, pretty much all the way to the top right here. I I closed it already somewhere in this consolidation. I was taking profits. I closed it, and I was just waiting for another drop, another correction because I was seeing different things. I was seeing that divergence right here on the RSI on the on the four hour time frame. So. I had some kind of doubts that the market could actually drop. The market did drop. Uh, I missed the entry on the buy on, on NASDAQ though. I should have made the entry somewhere around here. Uh, I did I did actually miss it, but however, I did get in on uh, S&P 500 and US study. I will show you in a few minutes. So basically guys, with this, what I'm trying to show you here is that you can do the same, all right? You can definitely do the same. Once the market, okay, with these two indicators, I'm using the 80 EMA and the 600 SMA. Once the market drops in, in on a four-hour time frame, right? This is it has to be on a four-hour. So once the market reaches the 600, I'm gonna be looking for that buy to hold, okay? For I don't know for the next two months, three months, depend on how long that push is gonna be. Like right now, for example, right here, you see this this push we had here pretty much with this nice bullish flag right there um, for how many days the price was actually up you know you can say that okay the market was somewhere up here for 39 days you see right here 39 days so a bit over one month before the market has started to again do a correction so something guys for you to have in mind is that indices they're not going to be always just pushing up, okay? You, they're going to have some type of correction, right? So they're normally, and, and you can actually measure. You can you can definitely measure. You can use the ruler here. You can go from the moment the market has started to break above the 600 until the market went down again. So this is about 133 days. So you see the distance. The market goes low. It just a few days. It is not usually that much. It could be maybe a week, two weeks. Yeah, this was about two weeks. The price testing the um, uh, 600 uh, before actually starting to push up. So right now, basically, what this indicator is telling you is that when the market on a four-hour time frame, when the price is reaching the 600, is basically, basically the price is very cheap. Okay, something is happening. Something is happening. Uh, for example, this drop. Coincidentally, whenever you're going to see the drop like this. I always say uh, I always say this guys is that coincidentally the correction is because something is happening right here this was uh in China a few things were happening in China uh so every every fall every correction something is going to be happening in the planet that is going to affect coincidentally it's going to affect and the market will reach the 600 and then it's just going to start looking up okay and since remember this is basically US economy so 
All right, I just want to give you there the entries. You can be spotting, you can be looking for this type of entries, guys. Boom, you have that buy right there. You have this buy right there. You know, every time the market goes, um, starts pushing up above the 600, you could be looking for this type of bias, you know, and hold this bias uh, for swing strategies, okay, for swing trading, right, for several days. So that's basically it, okay? My first... Um, my biggest one so far was this one. This one I started actually using the the swing strategy. I decided to 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 start doing swing trading on indices. It was pretty much uh, right here somewhere in this zone. So right now I made another buy on inside this flag right here, which this was on Friday. Friday was crazy. I'm gonna hide this in the kiddos for the moment. Uh, on Friday was crazy crazy i got stopped out and i got i would say i didn't have enough patience because look at what happened i wanted to show you uh, i actually the the first analysis that i had on nasdaq was this let's see here yeah this was the first analysis right okay so this is basically the new york stock exchange i believe it was somewhere around here yeah this one so before the New York stock exchange, there was some news. The core CPI news, the price pushed up, giving me that beautiful bullish engulfing candle. And then as soon as the New York stock exchange opened, this thing actually started to melt down very hard, very strong. And I was, just sometimes I have to admit it, I don't have uh, much patience. And I decided, I told my group, I told my team on Telegram that I was, uh, I was closing. I was cutting my losses. So I did close it. And then, you know, I I took the patience, I, I took the time, and I rearranged my chart again. I rearranged it, and I I noticed that you know all this shit, all this noise right here, all this volatility, it was just pretty much due to the news. Okay, so this right here, you see this M formation right here. This is all volatility. So this is the news. Then the New York Stock Exchange went down, then up and down. So it was crazy until somewhere around, it was about almost midday, almost midday, the market, you see this big momentum. I went on a 15 minute time frame. So the price pushed, did a pullback. You see this small support right here. This is when I was starting to see the actual direction of the market, okay? You see this, sometimes I always tell you this as well, guys. Sometimes I don't like trading when the New York Stock Exchange opens because there's so much craziness and the market will be, you know, just trying to stop you out, you know, up and down, up and down. And I hate that. I hate when the market is doing these type of movements, crazy movements. So I try to stay out of it. Sometimes even I cut losses when I shouldn't, but, I, you know, I happen to notice that whenever I cut my losses, it's better than actually holding that thing and going against me strong. I don't care if I got stopped out or if I cut my losses too early. I don't, I don't, I don't mind. I don't care because I know that I'm not going to be blowing my account with just one single trade. It's just that I'm, I just decided to cut the losses. So, and so I went on a 15 minute and I noticed this, this type of, you know, reaching a support plus giving this nice engulfing candle. And I, I saw that I noticed this. This could be a nice demand zone right here. So I decided to make another buy. So I did actually send it to the VIP in this case, and I said I took the risk. You see, this is my VIP group, and uh, I was making the entry somewhere around this zone. This candle had not closed yet by the time I made the entry, but I decided to take the risk right there, stop loss right there, quite you know short. It's it's a very tight stop loss, and uh, and then. It's very weird what happened because it started to break at around 3.15 p.m., which normally the market closes at around uh, 4, 15 to, 15 to 5, I think, I believe. Yeah, 15 to 5 p.m. It closes in my country. And, and this thing decided to actually break very strong to the upside at around 3.15. So an hour, about an hour or so, over an hour, a little over an hour, uh, left the market decided to push up very strong and i was like oh shoot this yeah it was a crazy day it was a crazy friday um but it it is a nice flag though and but you see you see that you're not always going to be like on, on the flag look this was my first setup that i had it was a little smaller 
I think I was measuring with this one. Yeah, I had I had my my channel this way. You know, I was seeing that this is this was the actual breakout with the news, but it was not. You know, it was not time yet. But however, if you follow the price action right here, the market did want it to to actually continue pushing up. It was it was acting weird. What the heck am I doing? And uh, one second. All right, so the price was acting weird. It was a little push right here, push, and then push. But you see, all the time the market was creating, was creating a new highs. It was creating highs and higher lows. So even right here, you know. So it it, it was bullish, but it just it was just very indecisive because of the news. So news are gonna mess it up sometimes. Okay, so that is it. That was basically my my first setup and uh now you know after rearranging everything this was the the actual formation okay nice breakout to the upside let's see what's going to happen now next week on monday once the market starts if it's going to do a pullback most likely it's going to do a pullback and then it's going to start pushing up all right let's see what's going to happen because hopefully hopefully next week the market, could, you know, if it breaks this four hour zone, I'm sure we're going to have, we're going to be creating new record highs, most likely next week or the next, uh, the week above. So that's see what's going to happen right there. Uh, US 30. US 30 also messed it up, also messed it up. It was crazy. But anyways, we're getting actually on top of that nice four hour zone, which is what I was looking for. I do have my entry right here. I'm on, I'm swing trading this one, as I mentioned. This was my previous swing trade when I decided to close somewhere around here when the market was breaking this previous zone right here, it started to break below. I closed it and I took my profit. So this one, I am out. Now I do, I am on this swing trade on this one right here inside this channel. I also, uh, you know, shared all this analysis, this entry on my VIP group as well. If you're interested, you can take a look on the on my Telegram. Um, but right now you see the market is actually breaking as well market is in fact creating highs let's see so price push pull bar push pull bar you see right here it created a new high so still we might have another pullback to retest this one again and then this thing could continue to the upside okay next week but it's looking good um, I'm most likely going to be looking for more buys on a pullback, okay? Once the price pushes up, I'm going to be looking for more buys. You can say this is, let's see, I'm going to be clean here. I'm on a one hour, so you can start drawing your trend, okay? You can have an idea that, all right, this could be, you know, my small trend right there. So I'm going to be waiting for the price to uh, pull back right here and i will find somewhere around here this on uh, a nice trigger something that tells me buy so i can you know follow this thing all the way to the top um, and let's see what's going to happen and uh, the the year is ending so hmm, let's see if we can end with a big big bang um s p 500 it was kind of like doing the same same flag, a lot of noise, a lot of indecision. You could, uh, you can see this breakout happen with the news. Then the New York stock could change open, went down, retesting this thing very aggressively. Look at that rejection right there. The market didn't want it to go down. It didn't want. You see, this is a four-hour zone. It didn't want it to break, and then ended up uh, pushing up and reaching at least our target. Our first target was right here. So nice, nice formation as well there on S&P 500. A lot. A noise, yeah, a lot of a lot of weird formation, but yeah, I'm also holding right here, uh, right here, guys, on this channel. I'm holding on, I'm swinging this this S&P 500, uh, which is, I mean, this is nice. Look at this. I'm gonna open the indicators again for the swing strategy, guys. I highly recommend you to check it out. You know, watch this playlist that I have for the swing strategy. is so nice, even on S&P 500, it's even nicer. Uh, once the market reaches that 600 line, you see we're in, in this this uptrend for like even ever since the the coronavirus. Look at this big big uptrend right here. So every time the market reaches the 600, these are beautiful swing 
traits, you can even hold this thing for an entire year. Like the coronavirus is starting to make that correction and started to push back up and climb on top of the 600. What, what when was that? May 25, May 25, 2020. So more than a year so far. Look at that entire push. So I, I, I am loving, I'm loving it. Like um, S&P 500, definitely. I wish I could have known this. Like when I started uh, training indices, which was basically by the beginning of this year, uh, I wish I could have known this earlier because this is fire right here. You can just hold this trade uh, for an entire year. It's very weird, okay? Just be careful there. I don't want you guys to take it wrong, understand incorrectly. You see this massive drop. This was coronavirus, okay? This is not, this is something like that is not um, like very often. How often we have a pandemic now, right? So unless, again, maybe a variant or something else is coming out, but you know, because now things are more controlled, we people is more scared right now about the you know the pandemic. Now you have a lot of protocols of security and health and all that shit. So I don't think we're gonna have a crash like this again, but it could happen. But it if you know if it happens, it's not that often. It's something that you should not be worried about because it's not that often. So if you decide to hold. Uh, you know, a buy for an entire year and take your profits by the end of the year. That's, you know, that, that's something you can do. Um, and I'm planning to do that. So keep adding buys as long, you know, uh, once the market, again, does the pullback and it reaches the 600, you bet I'm buying again and holding this thing. All right. I could be finding more buys here, maybe a scalping. Yes. But I love, I love doing swing trading, uh, swing trades now. So that's a nice rejection right here on this four hour. Um, I, I am pretty sure you see S&P 500 is very close to the new record highs ever. So I, I, I'm holding this thing definitely for, uh, for a few months. Let's see what is going to happen. Um, I have alerts all the way down here. I'm on break even already. If this thing goes down, I don't even care. Um, but of course, because we are now seeing direction we're seeing that the clear direction is to the upside so why would you close it you know you could you could be scared you start closing your entries if you start seeing now i don't know direction to the downside maybe breaking the structures to the downside then you can get scared but at the moment this thing is just there's no sign that it wants to go down so um i might be being prepared if it starts breaking again to the downside or even right here but we're way too far from the entry point um, let's see what's going to happen. It's still this virus, uh, Omicron, is still the fear is out there. But let's see. And, uh, you know, things in China as well that they want to delist some um, some of their stocks out of the uh, out of the U.S. So that could cause a small crash as well or some type of panic or will could cause uh, that, you know, stock owners will start selling their stocks. So market, uh, perhaps the S&P 500 could start going lower. Uh, but let's see what's going to happen. That's basically it, guys. That's what I wanted to show you what to expect for next week. I do expect S&P 500 to continue pushing up. We are breaking and uh, creating new highs. We continue creating new highs right now. Uh, US 30, exactly the same. It is creating new highs within this zone. It broke, as I mentioned, is breaking uh, on a four hour. It's breaking my four hour support right here, uh, resistance. Very strong to the upside, so we can we could expect a little pullback, but I'm sure this is going to continue pushing up. And Nasdaq basically exactly the same. Like after this flag formation, this bullish formation, uh, we are still like kind of halfway up to the first to the first TP, but the direction at least is looking clear and is looking nice. So uh, that is basically it. That's what I wanted to mention, guys, today. Thank you again for watching. If you're interested again on getting the course, don't miss out because this is for life. Of course, the course is recorded. The mentorship is going to start on January. It's going to be just for one month. And the, but the actual VIP group for the signals is for life. All right. So if you're interested, just let me know. And that will be all for today, guys. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take it easy.